Welcome to the special edition of Neurology News Network. I'm Marco Meglio. First up, according to findings from a recently published case control study, tobacco smoking, a modifiable un environmental factor, is linked with risk of multiple sclerosis and is most likely causal. Based on this concept, the study indicated that at least 13% of cases of MS could be prevented through the avoidance of tobacco smoking. The study included 9,419 individuals with MS participating in two large Swedish cohorts and 9,419 controls matched for age, gender, and residential area at the time of, current, of disease diagnosis. Smokers were defined as those who had ever smoked cigarettes regularly before MS onset or the equivalent age in controls. In total, 44.1% of persons with MS and 35.9% of controls had ever smoked prior to disease onset or index age. At the time of MS onset, 38.1% of cases and 29.2% of controls were still smoking, and the overall attributable fraction of MS because of smoking was 13.1%, and in women who made up 72% of the population, the AF was 10.6%, whereas men had an attributable effect fraction of 19.1%. Next up, in a cohort study that spanned almost 50 years, investigators found a threefold ri increased risk of autism after pediatric stroke and even greater risk observed in individuals with comorbid epilepsy. These findings could not be explained by being born preterm, being small for gestational age, or having first degree relative with autism. Using Swedish registries, the investigators identified 1,322 individu indexed individuals with ischemic stroke who were younger than 18 years, alive one week after stroke, and were without prior autism. Each child with ischemic stroke was compared with 10 controls matched for age or matched for sex, year of birth, and country of residence. After excluding children who died within the first week after stroke or diagnosed with autism before their stroke, 1,322 index individuals and 13,193 controls remain. Of index individuals with ischemic stroke, 3.5% were diagnosed with autism compared to 1.2% of controls, corresponding to an adjusted HR of 3.02. And lastly, newly published post hoc data from the Phase 1 START study and the Phase 3 STRIVE US and STRIVE EU studies show that Zolgensma helped patients with symptomatic SMA type 1 achieve good bulbar function, a swallowing and speech problem commonly reported by this patient group. Although there is no widely accepted definition for bulbar function in SMA, investigators defined it as the ability to orally communicate with comprehension by an unknown listener and swallow to orally meet nutritional needs while maintaining airway protection. Presented at the 2022 MDA Clinical and Scientific Conference in Nashville, Tennessee, the data included 65 patients who were younger than six months of age at the time of administration. At the end of the analysis, 95% or 19 out of 20 of the patients met the communication endpoint, 92%, 60 out of 65, had evidence of normal swallow, and 92%, 60 out of 65, had no aspiration or pneumonia aspiration event reported. Overall, 80%, 16 out of 20, achieved the composite endpoint of achieving all three outcomes. For more direct access to expert insight, head to neurologylive.com. This has been Neurology News Network. Thanks for watching.